Welcome back to the third part of the Flutter YouTube search tutorial course. In the previous part, we've created a data source which acts as an interface between the raw JSON data we get from the HTTP client and our built value model classes. Data source, however, is a fairly low level class which would be cumbersome to put into a block directly. We need to move up the ladder of abstraction, therefore. For that, we are going to create a repository. Repositories can combine data from multiple sources or, as in our case, make the data easier to get to. We can accomplish this simplification by preparing a nice way for data pagination and we are going to put this simplification in place right inside the repository. Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. So let's move up the ladder of abstraction, as I've already said, from YouTube data source over to YouTube repository. As always in this tutorial series, I have already written a test as I was preparing for this tutorial series. So here you go. Here you have the YouTube repository test under test folder data repository and we're going to go over it quickly and then you can read it on your own as your homework to understand test-driven development and always imagine that you are writing tests first and only then you are trying to implement the functionality and once the test passes you are going to move on to another test and implement that and so on until you have every single test that's present inside this YouTube repository test file implemented. That means that the test actually passes. We're going to continue with the search of YouTube videos and now we are not going to mock HTTP client but we are going to mock our YouTube data source which we have created in the previous tutorial. Then we will also need a YouTube repository which is not yet present though because we are going to create it right in this part. We are also going to need the fixtures so the data which will be returned from the YouTube API. But this time we are not going to use these fixtures directly in tests when we are setting up all of the tests for searching so inside the group search we have a setup function and right inside the setup function we are converting these json strings so these fixtures we are converting them right into data classes of built value so to youtube search results we want to have search result no next page search result and also empty search result at hand in this part, we are going to implement a function called search videos and also a function called fetch next result page. So let's first look at the search videos function. Search videos will return a list of search model dot item. So basically just an item. If you have forgotten, an item is a class which holds this kind of data. So ID and snippet then search snippet holds some other data which is published at channel ID, title description and so on. So this search function will return precisely this item. Actually, this description is a bit wrong because I've changed the nomenclature since I've written the test. So we can change this that it returns a list search model item to simply say returns search item. And we're good to go here. Here's the actual test for that. But let's now move on to another test. It will also throw a no search results exception when calling with an unknown query string. This is so that we can handle it nicely in the UI and we can display some kind of a text widget along with an icon that, oh, there are no search results for this kind of a query string. It's better to throw an exception than just to return an empty list of results. That's because we are going to have an error handling in place inside the UI that whenever an exception is thrown, we are actually going to always display some kind of an error message. So yeah, that's why we are throwing an exception and not just returning an empty list of results here when there are no results for a given query string. Now we're moving to another function, which is fetch next result page. And this function will throw a search not initiated exception when it is called without previously calling search videos. This is an important functionality because you cannot fetch next result page if there was not first page already present. So if we are going to call this function without previously calling search videos, which is the function above, right? 
then we are going to return search not initiated exception. Then also fetch next result page will return also a list of search items containing the result from the next page when called properly after calling search videos first. So fetch next result page will not return all of the items, it will only return the next page items. So if we have already seen two pages, fetch next result page will only return the items which are present in the second page, not both of those pages concatenated together. This is also important to know because then we have to concatenate these two pages ourselves in the block. Then another test is that it throws no next page token exception when called if we are at the end of the result list, hence no next page. That's also correct because we somehow want to notify our classes that they should no longer count with the next page being present. So the UI will change a bit. We are now going to put a loading indicator at the bottom of the paginated list. And this is the last test. So yeah, let's now move on to actually implementing this YouTube repository test and definitely don't worry because the test code is always much much longer than the actual production code but the test code is more important than the production code because without it you're going to write buggy code and nobody wants that. So now let's create YouTube search repository but first let's create a new folder under data called repository which contains YouTube repository. It's gonna be a simple class and as we already know from the tests we are gonna need YouTube data source as a property here. It's also gonna be a private property and now we're going to allow dependency injection by being able to pass this YouTube data source inside the constructor as a parameter here. Let's now move on to implementing search videos function, which will be asynchronous, so it needs to return a future. This future will contain a list, but it's not going to be just any kind of a list, but actually a built list, which will contain search items. So now let's uh, import all of these classes here. We cannot do that yet because we need to specify the name of the function and also that it, it will take string query. All right, now we are good to go after we make this an async body. And now let's import build list from build collection dart and also search item from, we are going to import the whole model search dart because why not? Now we need to get the search result from YouTube data source. So we are going to put that inside a final variable so search result will be equal to await YouTube data source, which is private. And then we want to call search videos on this YouTube data source and just pass in the query as query. And now we're going to simply check that if search result dot items dot is empty, and we do not want that, as you can remember, because if it is empty, we are going to throw an exception, which we currently don't have. So let's create that exception right now. It's going to be called no search results exception. And we're going to create that right under this YouTube repository class. So here it is. It's going to have only one final property with a message, no search results. And also in a production app, you would probably want to internationalize this string but that is outside the scope of this tutorial series and also as always you can get the code from the link in the video description which is gonna take you to resocoder.com now let's actually throw this no search results exception from over here and otherwise so if the search results items are not empty we are going to return these search results so search result items are what we want to return. If we were only implementing search videos, this would be the final implementation of this function. But because we are also going to implement fetch next result page, 
we're actually gonna have to change this a bit. But first, let's actually try to implement Fetchnex result page and let's see what we are missing right inside search videos now. So Fetchnex result page will have the same return type because it's also going to return build list of search items. It's not going to have any parameters because it's gonna be fetching only the next page and it's also gonna be asynchronous. And now let's look at the test again and as we can remember, fetch next result page should throw a search not initiated exception when called without previously calling search videos. Currently, we have no way in the world to know whether or not search videos was called prior to fetch next result page. And actually, we cannot even fetch the next result page because we don't have the necessary data. We don't have the next page token and the search query for which we should search. So yeah, we somehow need to cache the values from search videos. For that, we are going to create two private properties, last search query and also next page token right over here in the YouTube repository. And we are going to cache these values inside a function called appropriately cache values. It's going to be right under search videos. And this time it's going to be only a private function because we only want to call it from within this class. And let's actually call it right now from search videos. So whenever we already have the search result, we know what the query for which we are searching is and the query is query. And also we know the next page token because the next page token is present under search result dot next page token, right? And now once we have these values cached, we can now use them inside the fetch next result page. So let's do that right now. We can first check if last search query is equal to null. And if it is, we want to throw that aforementioned exception called search not initiated exception. So let's create the search not initiated exception. It's going to look really similar to no search results exception, just that the message will be different. And it's that we cannot get the next result page without searching first, which is correct. So now let's throw this search not initiated exception from here. And also another error can occur. And that is if the next page token is also null. And probably it's obvious that we cannot fetch the next result page if there is no actual next page present. So we need to throw another exception and that will be no next page token exception. So let's create even that down here. It's not going to have any message and let's throw it from within this if statement. Once we have these safety measures in place, we can finally fetch the next page result. So final next page search result. And it's going to be equal to await because we want to await for the result. And again, let's call YouTube data source, which is private dot search videos. And this time we are going to call it a bit differently than we did inside search videos here. Because in addition to the query parameter, which we are going to pass here, which is nothing else than the last search query, we also want to pass in the page token, which will be nothing else than the next page token. And now let the Dart formatter to format this code nicely for us. Once we have the next page result, we again want to cache values from this search result. This time the query will be last search query because the query is not changing. And also next page token will be next page search result dot next page token. So if this was the second page, the next page token will be for the third page and so on. And let's also put a comma at the end so that it's nicely formatted. And finally, we can return next page search result dot items. Awesome. So we have two functions, search videos and also fetch next result page. And a repository is another abstraction layer in which we are using the classes which are an abstraction layer below it. So in our case, that's YouTube data source and we are calling functions on that. YouTube repository should now be working, but you don't have to take my word for it because we can actually test that functionality and really see if it works or not. But before we do that, we need to import all of these missing classes. 
So let's import all of that. And now we should be good to go. So let's actually test it. Again, you can either use the keyboard shortcut or you can go to debug, then flower and let's select run all tests and let's actually run them now. So YouTube repository test.dart an exception has occurred, no search results exception, but actually that's the correct behavior and this also happened in the previous uh, tutorial where there was an exception thrown, which was an expected behavior, but it still somehow managed to break the test. So let's now actually stop the test from running and uh, let's run it again. This time I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, so hopefully it will work this time. And yeah, surely it works. So now the search videos passes and also fetch next result page passes. I honestly have no clue why it always decides that when an exception is thrown, even though it's expected that it's going to break the test. But hey, we're going to have to live with that kind of behavior. And also that's it for this part, which was the third part in the tutorial series in which you are learning how to create YouTube search app by using the block pattern. We have created YouTube repository. And if this video helped you, I'm sure that you are going to be helped by another videos too. So definitely subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button so that you can join the notification squad and be notified about every single video that I upload. Also, if this video helped you, consider giving it a like and also share it with other developers so that they can learn every single thing that I'm going to be presenting here for you in this tutorial series. And there is going to be a lot to learn even now, but even down the road. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions or questions or really anything else to say. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and see you in the next video.